Well, indeed, it's necessary to know what you're dealing with in order to make sure that you work on it correctly and that you configure it correctly. In this case, I'm going to talk about a few points that, for example, I've seen people get confused with or are misinformed about it. And uh, we're going to start with uh, center groups, then move to content filters, message filters, what is the best option in a certain scenario. And the last one, we're going to touch a uh, minute part of uh, the SMA. Okay, not really. That's, that's almost nothing. But anyways, so these are going to be the three main parts. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so one of the things that you have to configure by any means necessary is a center group. So right now I'm, I'm in the mail policies, hat or view, and we know that we have some center groups out here. So let's say I click on this first one and we, we see some entries in here. So we have dummy.tests.com and then we have this IP address. This dummy.tests.com is it a domain name? No, it's not a domain name. It's a host name. Okay. So let's click on add sender. And you see, if you're confused about it, you can just go ahead and click on this question mark here and we'll see all the options that are available. So it talks about host names, not domain names. So this is one of the confusions that I've seen some people have. So if you already knew about it, that's good. If you don't, well, this is your answer. Now, moving on to some other things. Okay, now we're gonna talk about message filters. Now, message filters are only configurable from the CLI and the command would be filters. Okay, now why are we talking about it? Let me tell you why. So we have the work queue, which consists of the anti-spam, antivirus, AMP, gray mail, content filters, and so on. Now, let's say, for example, you want to drop all the emails coming in from test.com at test.com this domain now rather than putting a filter in the content filters for dropping or quarantining emails coming from at test.com you can actually go ahead and put a filter in the message filters create a message filter and drop or quarantine do the same action but add the message filters why what are the advantages first of all your cpu utilization so no unnecessary processing because you know when the email comes in in the work queue it has to be processed to all of these but we know this as well that message filters are executed before the work queue so it's definitely going to help with that all right moving forward Okay, now this one's gonna be about content filters and we know that we have a couple of options available. We have incoming content filters, we have outgoing content filters right here. Okay, so I'm in the incoming content filters, but it applies to both. So this action that I'm gonna talk about is the skip remaining content filters. You notice that it's a final action. So what it does is it makes sure, I mean, if you have this action configured, Forget about the rest of the content filters getting executed. So once this content filter, this particular content filter, if this content filter is executed, let's name it test. If this is executed somehow, and you have configured the action as skip remaining content filters, then none of the content filters after this content filter are gonna be executed. You have the same option available in the message filters as well. Okay, and for the message filters, we have a similar option right here, skip filters. Now quickly, uh, just going through all this, message fill here is the message filter name, and I'm using the condition as an example. If the mail from is equal to asan at networkingsecurity.com, then go ahead and take these two actions. The first one is login entry, email from so-and-so and then skip filters. Now this skip filters does not apply to the work queue. So the work queue is still gonna be executed. Now the skip filters only applies to the rest of the message filters that may be present after this message filter. All right, well, let's move on. Okay, let's talk about this last part. Now, if we go to network and then certificates, I click on it, and this is the page I'm gonna land on, 
which is certificates. And I'm in the ESA right now, so we have all these options available. Okay, in the ESA, we have the option of configuring the certificates from the GUI as well. But if we were to take a look in the SMA, for example, if I go to network, in the SMA, I don't see that option. So are there no certificates available in the SMA? Well, there are, but we don't have that option available from the GUI, but it's available from the CLI. And the command would be cert config. I'm going to put that down in the description below. Well, I just wanted to keep it short. Hopefully it was useful for you. I'm going to come up with more such videos, just try to uh, just trying to keep it as short as possible, but trying to cover as much as possible. So thank you so much for watching the video and please like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're interested to know more about the ESA. Well, again, thank you so much. You have a wonderful time ahead. Thank you, folks. Goodbye. Thank you.